morning, my friends. Today's the 28th of June. I'll be sharing the devotion from Jesus Calling by Sarah Young, along with a couple scriptures. I wanted to thank each and every one of you for uh, spending a little bit of time with me in the morning and uh, partaking of the Spirit. Today it says, Taste and see that I am good. This command contains an invitation to experience my living presence. It also contains a promise. The more you experience me, the more convinced you become of my goodness. This knowledge is essential to your faith walk. When adversities strike, the human instinct is to doubt my goodness. My ways are mysterious, even to those who know me intimately. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and thoughts higher than your ways and thoughts. Do not try to fathom my ways. Instead, spend time enjoying me and experiencing my goodness. Last night, uh, my wife and I had a, a Bible study. And she led the study and the discussion, I should say. And some of the things that we talked about is people apostatizing, you know, sometimes it's because of pride or sometimes it's because of miscommunication. Um, but generally it's for lack of intimacy with the Lord. And unfortunately that's the downfall of many. Um, but when we do this exactly what it says here, spend time enjoying me and experiencing my goodness instead of trying to fathom the Lord's ways, that's what it's all about. The Lord, he, he commanded us to love. He didn't say, understand everything, right? No, he said, come follow me. Love God, love your neighbor. It seems simple, right? Even the Pharisees and Sadducees were like, what? You're crazy, man. But it's true, because that is the mark of heaven, humility, meekness, charity. So the first scripture I want to share with you is Psalm 34, verse 8, which this is King David. And I'm going to actually read verse 9, too, because I like it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. He will supply us with all we need. All we have to do is trust him. And we may not understand what we need. We may think that we need other things. But the Lord is aware, and he is more than a few steps ahead of us. So maybe we're going through the muck. We're going through some opposition. Maybe we need that spiritual strength or that testimony. Maybe we need to endure something because it's not about us. Maybe someone else is watching us go through that. And based on how we handle that situation, we'll kind of either plant the seed of belief or of doubt in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's just an example. I, I think there's a lot to this life that... We, one, we don't have to understand. Two, we're not going to understand. Some things we just have to accept, have faith, and walk by that faith, not by sight. The next scripture I'll share with you is in the book of Isaiah. This is one of my favorite passages, uh, chapter 55, verses 8 and 9, which the Lord says, Actually, I am going to read 7, no, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man in his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Pause. He's there with open arms arms like he wants to to forgive us if we've went astray or if we've been proud all we have to do is seek him 
And regardless of anything, he's no respecter of persons. Sin is sin, and we're all sinners. So he accepts each and every one of us. So on that note, I want to share my testimony of forgiveness. I, my brother was murdered in 2014, and the Lord spoke to me. And he told me, Nick, you have to forgive Enrique and La Quinta because I'm not a respecter of persons, and they deserve my mercy as much as you do. For the average person, even me at the time, I thought, man, but I've never murdered someone. But that's not the point. The point is we're all children of God, deserving of his mercy and grace. And regardless if we understand the whys behind the whats, verses 8 and 9, the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The Lord commanded me to do that, to forgive, because forgiveness is an essence of love. We're sent here to love the Lord, not to choose who we love. We're here to love everyone, despite our differences in opinion, personality, life. Our job is to love, to serve, and to share. I testify to you that if you spend time in the Lord's presence, He will develop you. He will help you align your will with His will so that your life reflects His light and glorifies Him. I know this is true with every fiber of my being, and I know that the Lord is aware of you and He loves you. I challenge you to spend a few minutes in His presence today. I love you, my friends. Peace be with you.